Welcome to an installation video or a series of videos, depending how this works out, about how I intend to install a 10 watt laser from endurancelasers.com onto a Shapeco 3 XXL. So what we see in front of us here are the three main components that come in the box from Endurance. The laser module. And this is housed inside a 2x2 two two square uh, length of aluminum tubing. It has mounting holes, through mounting holes. One side, the other side, they're countersunk. And then here we have the uh, power jack, and that's for the fan power. And on the other side, hardwired are the uh, wires, power wires for the laser itself. On the top is the cooling fan, and on the bottom we can see the heat sink, the lens, and uh, an extra large uh, focusing ring. All right. The control board in this box is fan cooled. Here we can see the fins from the heat sink. This power switch is three position and it's important to keep that in mind uh, unlike a two-position switch where one side is on and the other side is off, this one is center off. One side with the single bar, that is constant on. Um, this, <laughs> this is important to know for obvious reasons, right? You don't want to be switching here thinking it's off, right? And on the other side is TTL mode, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, this side has a whole lot of nothing, couple mounting screws, same with the back. Um, the end opposite the cooling fins is a key switch, color-coded green and red, and, um, so, you know, to keep unwanted, um, old kids or whatever from playing with the laser, right? Safety feature, I believe that's mandated now, uh, in the States. And then on this side, we have the power wires uh, coming up, the heavier gauge pair going hardwired to the laser, to the laser module. Those are the wires we looked at earlier. And then the thinner pair going to a plug. And this plug is going to go into the jack on the side of the laser module to power the fan. And then we have a pair of red and black wires, and these are going to go to the control board, the Shapeco's control board, to the PWM, the red will go to the PWM pin um, or hole, and then right next to that is a ground wire, uh, ground hole or pin, and that's where the black wire is going to go. And then we have the power for the box or for the control board inside the box. And that's going to come from the power supply. And that's just going to plug right in there. A little ferrite coil on that. And then we have the power supply itself rated anywhere on input, anywhere from 100 to 240 volts, depending on what you have. I'm, I'm happy with 120 myself. And then the output of 12 volts at 6 amps, which is plenty to power that 10 watt laser. And right here is the plug that comes with the unit. Fortunately, you know, we don't, we don't have that in the States, right? But um, Endurance Lasers were considerate enough to provide this adapter so that we can plug it into uh, the 110, 120 that we have here in the States. So that's it as far as components go. Uh, one other thing I would like to go over uh, is the length of the wires and what I intend to do uh, about that. They're, they're not really long enough now. I probably can't. Uh, maybe you can judge in the video. But uh, not, a, not a length 
sufficient to run it through the drag chain on your uh, on the shape of cow. Um, not the entire length. I'm not sure exactly what uh, Endurance had in mind here. Maybe mounting the uh, control board on the back of the gantry and then just running that to the laser. Uh, that may be it. I, I don't know. But I'm going to be doing something a little different, I think. And uh, uh, we'll discuss that either later in this video or in a subsequent video. Um, but let's go... Let me go over a couple things I've been thinking about on how I want to mount this and why. I currently have a JTEC 3.8 watt. Let me move this out of the way. I have a JTEC 3.8 mounted to the side of my uh, spindle mount. As you can see here and this worked out really well because of the size of the laser and the fan relatively small and I'm going to move all of this I'm going to move the spindle mount all the way over on the gantry to the left and we will uh, bring this all the way up front now this was important to me. Initially, I screwed up and I didn't allow for the clearance. I don't know if you can see this, but the clearance here between the fan, oh, what's going on? There we go. Between the fan and the front plate. So that roughly quarter of an inch space right in here. So if I did want to burn, cut, engrave, by bringing the spindle beyond the front plate, I didn't want that laser crashing into uh, this vertical plate. So that's a consideration for me when mounting this other, the, the endurance laser, which is going to be uh, quite a bit larger. I'm moving slowly so I don't feed any juice back into the... Um, the control board. All right. So now that we're on the far side here, if I wanted to leave, and I do, I want to leave the JTEC laser installed, at least for the time being. So I was thinking, well, I'll just mount the, the uh, endurance laser off to the side of the spindle here. So there's some room in there, right? But it's not sufficient because of the size. I'll I'm sorry if I'm giving people vertigo here, but there's not enough room. I, I don't have the clearance that I have with the JTEC over here on the right side uh, to mount this. I have some room in there. If I mounted the laser directly onto the spindle with no clearance at all, you know, orient it this way so that the power would come out the side. So I'd, I'd get some clearance. Now, I guess if you wanted to do something like that, mount it right to the spindle. But if you wanted to come off of there with anything at all, you're risking, you know, having your your Y come all the way forward here and running the laser into that plate. Nah, you don't want to do that. So my plan is to mount the laser to the very front of the unit. Now I'm going to lose some Y depth on this. I've been thinking about ways to compensate for that. Um, most of what I'm going to be engraving or cutting is not going to require the full depth of the XXL. So I decided to compromise and um, I intend to mount the laser right to the front. And that I think I'll cover in uh, another video. <clears throat> Going to be a little long-winded here anyway. So that's it. Um, keep an eye out for that. And I'll go over the materials I pick up for the mount. And uh, then we'll go into the wiring and all that sort of thing. Thank you very much for watching. My second video on how I intend to mount my 10 watt laser from endurancelasers.com onto my Shape of Co 3 XXL. The first video we covered what 
came in the box from Endurance and some of my thinking on how I was going to install it, where I was going to install it and so on. And I told you then that I would be covering the hardware in the next video um, and, you know, how I was going to do all that sort of thing. So here we are. I went to Home Depot and to Radio Shack. We're going to cover the hardware that I got from Home Depot and then in a subsequent video we'll cover the electronic stuff. Um, how to wire, you know, how I'm going to wire this all up to the control box and whatnot. So, my idea, if you watched my first video on this, was to mount the laser to the front of the spindle bracket, the spindle mount. And um, so I figured, well, I would probably use these two cap screws. Uh, not these, because these aren't going to be long enough if I'm going to add some thickness onto the front here. Uh, but at any rate, I was thinking, you know, at first maybe do it with some bar, put some bar stock on there. But because I'm going to have a little play in the holes, I'm not going to get the, per the holes perfectly aligned and there'll be a little slop in this whole thing. I'm sure that I would not have a nice, um, you know, be on a parallel plane with the uh, wasteboard and whatnot. And it would probably, you know, the weight of the laser, though not really heavy, but the weight of the laser, the bar, whatever, is probably going to tilt it off in that direction. I didn't want that. So I decided instead of the bar stock to go with some angle aluminum. Now, <laughs> you're going to look at this and say this is overkill, but I, there is some method to my madness. I'm going to try to put this under here and get a profile into the camera for you. Um, <laughs> here it is. This is inch and a half, I believe, uh, and it is, and I don't know if I'm going to get that profile in there or not, but there you go, right? It's eighth inch thick stuff. Let me take this out of here, and I'll show you the label, Home Depot's label, in case you're wanting to do something exactly like this, but I don't know. This was kind of pricey, so if you're on a, not that I'm not on a tight budget, but I'm kind of anal, and I wanted to do it the way that I thought was the best way I could uh, without actually fabricating, you know, <laughs> making something. I don't have a 3D printer, so I got to go with what's available, right? Anyway, there's this aluminum. And the plan is to cut off a good chunk of this on the top, the width of the spindle mount, and try to get back in focus over there somewhere to cut a good chunk off of this and leave a little bit here at the top as a lip that will then rest along this edge on the spindle mount and keep it from tilting. And then of course bore my two holes here in the end and go with the longer screws and then this will just butt up against this, rest on the top and go from there. But you know, what am I going to mount the actual laser? I'm not going to mount the laser to that. This, I didn't want to permanently mount the laser to the spindle, okay? Um, for various reasons, but I'd like to be able to take it off, set it aside, and put it back up there and do something nice and quick and dirty, nice and easy. Um, I could leave it there if I want to, take it off if I need to, whatever, right? But not without a whole bunch of screwing and unscrewing and bolting and, you know, zip ties or whatever, right? Um, magnets, um, I've got magnets, but I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of leery, uh, having magnets around electronics and, um, you know, if I set the laser next to something, I don't know. I just, I didn't want to do the magnetic thing. So, all right. So what I came up with is, uh, the wife and I used to be custom picture framers and there was a product back in the day. I think they still have this called Z bar. And they use something very similar that, to that for not just hanging pictures, but for hanging cabinetry and getting it very flush against the wall. So Home Depot, I'll show you the label. Home Depot had this. They had like three different kinds of this. And this one uh, I preferred, and I'll show you why in a bit. But let me turn it around so you can get the UPC on this. And I hope this is sufficiently in focus for you. But... Um, so I got this stuff, and I'll show you what it is and take it out of the package here. It's two pieces of aluminum stock and extruded or machined or however they do it. 
into a profile that allows you so if you had the cabinet you would mount this piece to the wall and this piece to the cabinet the mounting holes already pre-drilled and then you take your cabinet and just go over here and hang it on the wall right um, there is a if you look at this profile there's this semicircle here that C uh, that is to give the the cabinet I guess a resting spot so it's not you're going to stay your cabinet's going to stay parallel to the wall or whatnot and, and in the case of the laser that's going to come in very handy so my plan is to mount this piece here to the angle uh, aluminum angle that I just showed you onto the front of the spindle mount and then to mount this to the uh, to the laser itself and again I know that's out of focus let me see if I can get something better here if you can't catch that profile otherwise right so that's the plan so I'm gonna set those aside um, and I don't remember how much all this stuff was guys um, but everything that I bought to do this uh, well, Jesus what did it come to from Home Depot I think it was like 80 bucks so kind of pricey I'm gonna have a lot of leftover stuff for other projects though so I don't feel too bad about that I mean come on it's you know the laser itself isn't um, cheap I mean it's an investment right it's a business expense so okay so remember we were talking about these bolts uh, now that I'm gonna have some more meat on the front of this with that aluminum um, those had to be a little longer and if I remember right these mic'd out at about 55 millimeters pull up my very accurate uh, Harbor Freight <laughs> Harbor Freight calipers here, and I'll go this way instead of the other way. I don't know. What do we get? To? Oh, I have it in inches. I need millimeters. I don't understand this whole millimeters thing. Anyway, yeah, 55, roughly. So, not long enough. But because I wasn't sure exactly how I was going to do this, I bought a whole bunch of extras. So that kind of ate into that 80 bucks, right? I have some extra bolts, cap screws um, of various lengths. But I think these are probably going to work fine. These are, M, um, f well, they're M5s just like the others, but they're 65 millimeters long. I also have some 60s and I've got some longer, you know. But anyway, same, same uh, cap head screws, cap socket, socket cap screws they're called. There's a UPC on it. Anyway, so that will go here. I got some lock washers to go along with that. Just little split washers, split rings to go on there um, to lock them in, keep everything tight, you know, vibration or whatever. And so all I will have then on the front of this will be the angle, aluminum angle, and one half of this bracket that I bought, this picture hanging, you know, faux Z-bar stuff, like so, right, right, and then that will bolt to that. So I'll have that and I don't think that's going to get in the way of anything. I sure hope not. I am using a, um, oh, a, oh, what's the name of my stupid dust boot? Reality 3DP. And uh, I think there's going to be enough clearance in there so that I can put that on without having to take this bracket off. I hope so. We'll find out. All right. Now, as for what gets mounted to the laser, then, I picked up this bar stock, two by one eighth by 36. And onto that, I'm going to mount the laser. I'm gonna go vertically. Let's see if I can get this into the picture perpendicular to the waste board, right? I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do this. Now, looking at this, obviously that, you know, the way that the the uh, laser housing is countersunk. This is intended to be the front, but these screws would encounter this bar. And so I'm gonna just flip it around like this. And, and the, the uh, screws or bolts that I got for this are going to, they're not gonna need the countersink, they're round head. So I'm gonna mount this to this bar, you know, a sufficient length, whatever I wind up doing. And then, 
that bar will be mounted to the hook part of that Z-bar like contraption. Like so. And so then I'll just take this and I'll hook it on to that bracket. That is the theory. Um, let's see what else. Okay, so the, the bolts, machine screws that I got for to mount the laser to that bar stock, that flat, that two inch bar stock, that's these. Notice the thread is a little different on, on this. I guess that's standard. A 0.7 thread versus a 0.8 thread on the M5s, a 0.7 on the M4s. I don't know. Does it go down for the M3? I don't know. Anyway, 60 millimeters long is what I came up with. That should be plenty long enough to get through both the laser housing and the bar stock. And what else? And then I got some nuts, of course, and more of those. I'll show you the the text on the nuts and then washers the text on the little washers hopefully you get all that so that should take care of that the mounting part um and i also got to thinking well shoot i'm gonna have this you know other mass of aluminum um attached to that laser housing and because cooling is an issue right with the lasers I figured, well, why not use that bar, you know, maybe, maybe, I don't know, it's going to work out this way. I don't have any way to test temperatures, no infrared, no sensors, no any of that, but um, I figured, what the heck. So I picked up, this is from Radio Shack, um, and it's a thermal, you know, paste, or I don't even know what they call it, thermal what? Anyway, it's in there someplace. Um, thermal compound, yes. Anyway, so I figure I'm going to slather a little bit of that on the back of this and, uh, you know, between this and, the, and that bar stock, and maybe I'll get some more heat sink, some heat transfer, and keep things a little cooler. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, all right. Oh, by the way, I also got this stuff. A lot of this is going to be pop riveted like I had done with my JTEC laser bracket. Uh, so I got an assortment of uh, pop rivets, some aluminum, some steel, and those should be sufficient uh, length to deal with whatever. So that's another part of that 80 bucks. And it's, so let's see, okay, laser. So I'm gonna have this mounted to the front of the spindle. And if you remember from the other video I did, I had a concern with the wire length not, not being enough to, um, you know, obviously not put it over. I, this is not long enough to put onto the side of the Shapeco on the XXL anyway, uh, over by the control box where I have the JTEC. The JTEC came with a nice extension um, wire set you, you could buy, you know, if you had a wider machine. So and that you could have the control box off on the side and just the laser over here. Um, so these wires aren't quite long enough. And instead of patching into them and all that, you know, uh, splicing more wire on top of it. What I elected to do, you know, and then I've got to run more, a lot more with the, with the drag chain. I'm going to mount the control box onto the laser. And then this whole contraption, this does not add a lot of weight. So, um, We'll add this to the front of the spindle mount, front of the laser that's going to be on the front of the spindle mount. And the way I'm going to do that, there are, on mine anyway, there are two vacant holes you can see here. See if I can get some white reflection. Two vacant holes, uh, screw holes, where, you know, through the fan, through the, the grating and, and the fan itself, um, and so my, oops, sorry about that. My plan is to take uh, probably two cable ties per side, and I'm just going to feed them in through that screw hole all the way through out the bottom, you know, which I'll have here in just a second, like so. And then put that sucker on there and wrap it around, you know, missing the fan. Wrap it around top and bottom with another one, and that should affix this to that, and that to that, and so on. 
That's it for this video. I apologize if I'm too long-winded or too explanatory or whatever. Um, but I hope you got something out of it. In the next one, we will cover... Um, I'll probably go ahead and do my all of my fabricating or assembly or whatever of all of this contraption now. Make sure everything's going to work. So in the next video, I will probably... I intend, I hope, to have it mounted here. And to have completed the wiring and then to show you what I've done... Um, what I've done with the wiring and how to run all that back to the control box or to the shape it goes control box. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Hope you got something out of it. Bye. All right. Welcome to the third in a series of videos on how I intend to connect my uh, 10 watt laser from endurancelasers.com onto my shape it go three XXL. The XXL I think only matters in terms of the length of the wire. I don't I don't know what other differences there might be. Maybe the control board. I don't know. This is the only one I've had. So anyway, so if you watched the last video, I had said at the end of the video that I was going to show everything assembled and the wiring and all that in my third video. But then I got to thinking it might not be a bad idea to go ahead and put a kind of an interim video in there to show uh, these brackets assembled. Uh, prior to connecting it to the laser and to the spindle mount. So that's what I'm doing here. Uh, pretty much everything was straightforward as I had said it was going to work, uh, or I had planned it to work. There was this picture uh, frame or cabinet hanging uh, channel, a two-piece setup that I got at Home Depot. And there's this piece, that profile, and this piece, and then this hangs onto this and keeps everything nice and pretty and snug against the wall for cabinets or picture framing. But in this case, I used this because I wanted to be able to have something nice and easy to just hang the laser when I wanted to use the laser and then just unhang it instead of having something permanently bolted. And I had mentioned I didn't necessarily want to use magnets because I, I'm kind of leery about magnets around electronics anyway. This is going... I'm dating myself here, but it used to be a big issue years ago. I don't know if it still is or not, but it's just, you know, it's one of those habit things, right? So, what I did was, as I had mentioned in the other video, I took a piece of one and a half inch angle uh, aluminum and I cut off, you know, probably an inch a little more. I've got maybe a quarter of an inch remaining here on the top, just to create a lip that when I hung it, bolted it with these two holes onto the spindle mount, the uh, that lip would catch the top of the spindle mount instead of having bar stock so that it might tip with the weight of the laser and the control board and all that. So you just bolt it right here and it's nice and sturdy. To that I pop riveted a length of this channel and you'll notice uh, um, the C on this, the C configuration here and that gives us a um, kind of a rest to keep things perpendicular when everything's hanging. I'll show you that in a second. But what I had to do, the, the one different, you know, when you're prototyping, you know, you kind of run into these things. The one thing I had to do was take this off because it was coincidental with the bolts that were coming through the laser housing and, and it, it caused it to, to teeter out. So, and I, didn't want to move the bolt heads and all that stuff. It was easier to do this. So all I did on this bracket was take that part of the C, that top part of the C off. All right. And it still has this to rest to keep things perpendicular when it's hanging. So uh, let's see. I pop riveted here and I went wide here and narrow on the other piece that I'll show you in a second so that I wouldn't have any um, interference between the, the pop rivets if this were sliding back and forth. As it turns out, they're on different elevations, so that wasn't an issue, but at any rate. So that's that. It's real straightforward. Um, on the side that faces the face of the spindle, I countersank uh, the holes that the pop rivets went through to make sure it was there was not going to be anything sticking out here. Um, I wanted that f flush, so it met here nicely. Uh, if I had not done that, this would have, I'm going to exaggerate here, but the rivets would have popped it out this way and it would not have been square and all that sort of thing. Anyway, so I, I just took a quarter inch drill um, and drilled in there and then 
when I pop riveted, they countersank. I had to file a little bit on this one, yet I didn't go deep enough, but no big deal. So that's that one. That's what mounts here. Oh, the bolts. The originals were 55 millimeters. In the last video, I said I thought I was going to use 65, but um, I didn't have any more meat other than this quarter inch here to go through. So I got uh, 60s, Just and these are not stainless. I don't know if they had stainless. I was uh, I had looked at so many nuts and bolts by that time. I just I just gra grabbed what I thought was going to work. So uh, I may replace these with stainless at some point, but um, I'm not. Nothing's really rusting down here, so I don't know. Anyway, that's it. Those get snugged there. And that gets it rests on top, and that's the end of that mounting bit, right? Okay, so the uh, the other part that bolts to the laser body. It was just a piece of bar stock. Again, I countersank these holes because that was going to or is going to go right up next to the laser housing here. So I don't want anything sticking out and causing things to be uneven or, you know, not mating nicely. And uh, pop riveted that to uh, the other piece of that two-piece set for uh, picture hanging, cabinet hanging, whatever that I got at Home Depot. And... Oops. See, I'm looking at what I'm looking at and not what you're looking at. I apologize. I keep doing that. Anyway, so, and there are the pop rivets there. And again, very straightforward. Um, you know, nothing fancy, everything nice and square. So, uh, these bolts that I got to bolt into the laser body. Let me see. Let's zero that out on my highly accurate Harbor Freight caliper. And let's go to millimeters. So these are 60s also. So these are 60s and the cap screws for the spindle mount are 60s. And so these go through here. And since I wanted everything flush, okay, it's giving me a hard time. Of course, live. All right, so I wanted everything flush on this side, so instead of taking advantage of the countersunk holes, which I really didn't need anyway, uh, because these are, you know, round head screws and they're flat on the back instead of on the top. So I take that and I just put it right through there, like so. And lock washer, nut, times four, right? And that gets bolted on nicely. Tighten that down and then what you have is this. Bada boom, bada bing. I shouldn't have said that. Anyway, so that's that. And it's pretty much, you know, in line. Let's see if I can focus here. Uh, in line with the spindle center. Center of the spindle. Uh, am I going to do this? Like right there, right? Pretty good. Um, but you can slide it back and forth a little. There's some play there. And because of the, um, there's, it's, it's a pretty good friction fit. I didn't see any need to have any sort of clamp to clamp it on there. I mean, it's not, it's not going anywhere, you know, with side to side pressure. You'd have to really, you know, I don't know, maybe it'll vibrate loose at some point. My shape of go doesn't really vibrate that much. So I don't guess that's going to be a problem. We're not cutting, right? Not routing, cutting. So there. That's that. And then, and this you'll see in the next video, but I'm going to go ahead now, after all this, and mount this, the control box board, to the laser itself. There's no added weight there. Um, and I guess that's it. I'll show you what I was talking about here a second ago, or a couple of minutes ago, about the coincidence of those bolts with the top of that C channel. So, I don't know if you can see this. Let me try to focus it better. I don't know if that's any better or not. But anyway, this bolt, as it goes through here, and you have the nut on there, uh, it that bolt and the nut were hitting this other half of the C. And so this was like up here and out like that. So that's why I had to take that off. Now, you guys are probably going to come up with something. You know, everyone's got their own thing. And um, so maybe this is just too much trouble. I don't know. But this is what I did, right? 
So that's it. Uh, next video is going to be the everything assembled and um, and wired. So thanks for watching this one and the others and all that sort of thing. Hope you got something out of it. Bye. All right. Welcome to the fourth and hopefully final video in a series about how I intend to hook a 10 watt laser from endurancelasers.com onto a Shapeco 3XXL. If I haven't tortured you with the other three videos yet, I suggest you pay them a visit. And uh, some of what I'm going to be talking about in here, if not all of it, is going to relate back some, somehow to those other three videos. So uh, the first video was about uh, what I got from Endurance Lasers, what came in the box, and my plans generally on how I was going to connect it. Uh, to the shape of code. The second video was after I had gone out and bought the stuff uh, from Home Depot and um, how I intended to work with all of that to make the mount and whatnot. Third video, uh, which I hadn't counted on initially, but I thought would be a good idea, I showed those completed brackets kind of in between the materials phase and this video where everything's all connected. And then uh, this video, of course, will be everything connected. So uh, here is the laser module with that bracket, which you saw in the last video. And uh, in between these two, I did put that thermal compound, that thermal grease, to try to get some heat transfer away from the laser onto, you know, whatever's going on, some, some mass of aluminum here, although little though it is. So that's that mounted there. Uh, I wound up affixing, as I had planned, the control board uh, module box, whatever, onto the laser module using the uh, cable ties that I, as I had talked about, going through the two vacant holes for the fan. Just wrapping those around and that worked out really well. It's really on there. It's not going anywhere. Um, let me see what else. Oh, the wire bundle. All of that excess wire, I, I didn't cut into it. I didn't want to violate any warranty, um, you know, potential warranty, have any warranty issues. Uh, not that I think George uh, would give me a hard time, George over at Endurance. But um, so I just bundled them up. Didn't hurt anything. Uh, after a while, I'll probably go ahead and get get rid of all that if I don't come up with some other mounting mechanism here. Um, so I just, I tied, you know, with a cable tie. Um, I don't know if you can see it in here or not, but there are a couple, there are two sets of screws between the box and the laser module. And I slid that cable tie right between those so that the weight of this bundle on that cable tie wouldn't eventually work its way down. You know, and in which case I'd have the bundle down here someplace. Anyway, so that I did that. Um, I took care not to pinch this wire down along with the rest of the bundle, but to allow it to move freely in that hole. I don't know if that would matter or not, but just, you know, give it a little relief there. And I think that's about it. Um, and as long as we're on this module, I'll go ahead and show you. These are the TTL wires that we talked about earlier that get hooked to the PWM and ground pins. Uh, I'm out of focus. Um, on the, uh, in, in the shape of co control board. Let's see if I can do better. No, I can't. Okay, so fine. It's going to give me a hard time. But anyway, um, all I did was connect this to the, um, the male of the 1 8 mono uh, audio plug that I got from Radio Shack. And that, of course, will mate with the female that I, and we'll go over here in just a second. But anyway, so that's it for that module, okay? Now, I'll scoot this up a little closer. And there is the setup for, uh, with the hardware, the bracket mounted to the, to the spindle, um, <laughs> to the spindle holder, spindle bracket, whatever the proper nomenclature is there. Anyway, so bolted that with, I did make a change from the last video or last couple of videos to this. Um, I added the um, 
some air assist to this using a bracket that I already had. And let me zoom in a little bit on this if I can. Oh, I can. Look at that. And focus. Ish, focus ish. There we go. So you can see I have this notched out. So if I were to take these two out or back them out a little bit, I'd be able to slide this bracket in that direction and it would, it would come right out of there. I wouldn't have to take the bolts all the way out. Um, but because of the extra thickness, this two is one eighth. This is a one, a piece of one inch aluminum angle. Um, but because of that added thickness back here on top, like so, right there, I had to add, originally I was going to go with, I think, 60 millimeter bolts in here, screw cap, or cap screws, and I wound up going to 65 to accommodate that extra thickness. I had tried it with the 60s, but I only got like three threads. You know, and that was kind of pushing it. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, my my old man was a, a a tool and die maker. And if I remember right, he said something about three threads, three and a half something being the minimum amount of threads that you want for a grip. And I didn't want to cut it that close. So I, I got plenty with these. The holes are deep enough, you know, tapped deeply enough. So that didn't turn into a problem. Uh, let me see. Let me back out and zoom out a little bit and move the camera down. So the play-by-play -play of live TV. Okay. Um, and I got a package of clamps, cable clamps, from uh, my local Ace Hardware. So you will see. How about I just snuck that in? I get in there. Quarter inch, and this one says six millimeter. These are the black ones. I also got some white ones because it had a different... 6.4 millimeters, different gauge. I don't know why they did that because when I checked these and wrapped them around yonder stainless steel straw, I didn't see any difference in them at all. But anyway, that's what I wound up using to hold the straw. The, the air nozzle, as it were. And um, just a couple uh, tapped self-tapping screws on there, which I ground flush on the back side. And so nothing is in the way of those bolts. Apologies again for all this unprofessionalism. Anyway, I ground them off here kind of flush so they wouldn't get in the way of pulling these two out of there if I need to or as I need to. So there's my air assist. Um, being able to push it down here wherever the laser winds up. So if I connect this now and hook this on top, we're in good shape. Push that back, and you see the air nozzle down here. Uh, it also works out, it, I haven't done any cutting yet with this, but I'm hoping that I'll be able to just spin this, and instead of using th this air nozzle that I have for the JTEC, that this will serve, you know, double duty, uh, and provide enough airflow for the JTEC as well as for the endurance, but uh, that's yet to be proven. So right now I've got, I left both on on there. Okay, um, the I had mentioned some wire to run the, the uh, TTL signal um, back to the Shapeco's control box and I wasn't sure, I had looked when I was in Home Depot, I looked at both a two conductor and a four conductor and by the time I got home I couldn't remember which one I had, uh, which one I got. So I think I mentioned it wrongly in the earlier videos, but what I wound up with was the two conductor with a ground, a bare ground and shield, uh, stranded wire. So I wound up getting that nice and flexible, um, so it works well with the drag chain and what have you. Anyway, so I, I abandoned the black Wire. So there were a red, a, a red, a black, and the uh, sh the shield, the wrapped shield, foil shield, and then the ground, the braided or I don't know, twisted or whatever, stranded ground. I wound up snipping off the black and just going with the bare ground because it was in contact with the shield. I don't know that it matters, but just in case that you know, shielded wire is better than not. So that's what I wound up doing. So the, the, the red wire goes to the center inside the female and then the, 
the bare wire to the um, to the outside, right? And that's it. Uh, power supply, I wound up putting up here on top with a couple cable ties onto the Z. Uh, I don't know. That's like the Z motor mount and uh, limit switch. Z limit switch mount. A couple cable ties up there. Nice and strong. You know, you got a little wiggle room in there, but it's not going to fall off. It's not going anywhere. I bundled the excess power cable wire here with a cable tie. Couple cable ties here, couple cable ties there. So basically, this now is going to plug in here. And then I need to put this down and the male bone connected to the female. And there's that. All right. Uh, let me see. On the side, I had a little bit of interference with the cable tie here and this bottom, bottom of that C channel that we talked about earlier. I just push it down a little bit and it actually acts sort of as a lock to keep it from any upward motion. It'll hit that and it's not going to just pop off if you bump it. So that's kind of a blessing, I guess, in a way. And we go around the back so you can see the air assist and the wires. These are the JTEC wires here, but this is that uh, two conductor wire going to the endurance. And then around with my totally messy <laughs> configuration of cable ties and wires and hoses and whatever else that goes back over to the controller side of the control board side of the shape go. And we'll go over there because I want to show you what I did with the wire inside the box. So let me go ahead and pull the cover off of this. Now this is the this is the JTEX uh, control box, and as long as I have this on, I'm going to show you. I, as I mentioned in the other videos, am going to keep both the JTEC and Endurance lasers installed for the time being. I may find that's unnecessary. I don't know. Kind of nice to have a spare, maybe. Um, but and I, I promised a uh, couple of guys that I would do some uh, some testing, cut tests with the three, it's a 3.8 from, uh, from JTEC. So I, I haven't done that yet and I want to be good on my words. So I'm going to leave it installed. Anyway, I'm going to zoom in here and show you. I installed a switch similar to the one that is on the endurance, uh, control module with a center off and up and down position. So the center I have is neutral. And what I've done is the PWM, um, the TTL signal coming off the PWM and ground inside the box that I'm going to show you here in just a minute. Uh, I've split that signal via this switch so that I can run either of those two lasers or, or none at all, just have the signal going no place by using that switch. So that's what that's doing there. It's a double pull, double throw is what I wound up using. All right, so we're going to go inside the box for a sec, and I'm going to put a little light on the subject and show you where I connected, where the wires connect. Urgently. Come on, there we go. That should be good enough. All right, pointer, and get a little light from this other phone that's vibrating over here. Don't people know I'm cutting a video? I mean, give me. All right, let's turn some light on. So, right here, let me zoom. Okay, I'm going to zoom in. This is this is a digital, not a uh, an optical zoom. So hopefully, we'll still be able to get it. This connector. See this wire right here. There's a red and a black beneath it. And let me see if I can focus better. I don't know. Anyway, the bottom is labeled ground and the top is PWM. And that is the, that pulse width modulation thingy. That's where your TTL is coming from or works with or however. I'm no electronic genius here, guys, so um, <laughs> do your own reading on that. But that is the wire. That red and that black are going to hook up to however you want to do it in this cable. You know, oops. I can't say this because you can't see this, but this 
is the wire going back to the endurance, okay? So you need two conductors. Just make sure that you get your red and your black right going back to the laser and, and connect it here on the uh, Shape of control board. And then you'll be able to modulate um, the, the signal and, and whatnot of the laser. And that's it. I mean, the electrical hookup to this is really easy. You just need a length of wire to run back through your drag chain or whatever back to the other laser. Um, so what else? Is there anything else? I don't think so. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with or just out of curiosity, this is what I'm using for my air assist. Um, I got this off of Amazon and it's a 32 watt, 60 liter per minute. Whatever that translates into, I don't know, liter, GPM, I don't know. You have gallons of air. But anyway, some CFM, some cubic feet, I don't know. 60 liters, good enough. And it worked. I tried it with the, uh, the JTEC. It works fine. I'm sure it's going to work fine with the endurance. So that's what I'm using. Just run a hose along the drag chain and whatnot. So that's it. Um, I keep saying that, don't I? And then I never shut up. There's your video. I hope that works out well for you. This is nice and easy now. Just pull, unplug that, unplug that, and take and store this in a safe place. Maybe, you know, tuck your, your um, air out of the way, you know, get it out of the way. You can do your routing or work with your other laser or whatever it is you want to do. Um, just a little bit of time. I'll tell you, in terms of... In terms of hours, the actual assembly without cutting the videos and taking the pictures in between and all of that, um, not counting shopping time, maybe a couple, three hours, you know, uh, as far as tools that you're going to need, um, not really going to, I don't know, some sort of a hacksaw, a file, sander, maybe a grinder or a Dremel. Um, just basic hand tools, nothing fancy. Pop rivet tool or, you know, if you want to use screws, whatever. Anyway, nothing complicated. Um, I hope these videos have done you some good. Uh, feel free to criticize the bejeebers out of me if you like. Or send me some kudos, whatever floats your boat. Um, take care and I wish you the best. Bye.